Hello learners, welcome to the NIOS studio. I am Dr. Manisha Vadva from Aditi Mahavidyale, University of Delhi. Today's topic of presentation is recording and reporting students' progress in EVS. What is recording of assessment? Why it should be done? After taking a question paper or exam paper, we give them marks. So what is this recording of assessment? A recording of assessment is to provide information gained through assessment to the learners and her parents. Recording of assessment should be done to support teaching and learning by providing feedback to students, parents and teachers about students' achievement and progress. Recording of assessment indicates various area for further development. There are different ways of reporting assessment which are commonly used. One is report cards which we get after the every terminal exam and the annual exam. Then there are also documentary evidences of assessment, electronic reporting. Nowadays schools are giving electronic report cards or electronic assessment of the students through internet, through emails, through messages. Then personal meetings. Teachers have meetings with parents and then they report assessment to parents. Each method has its own strength and limitation. For example, personal meetings. If a teacher is meeting parents of all students and giving detailed feedback on the assessment, then it is a very time-taking process. However, on the other hand, there are times that parents are not able to interpret report cards, what is mentioned in report cards. So in this presentation, we will see what are the different kinds of formats of report cards are used and is it actually essential or what does it convey to parents. Teachers word of assessment report um, a lot to students and parents. Thus, teachers should be sensitive towards reporting the result of assessment. Remembering that the main objective of reporting is to help the child progress. Therefore, assessment report is often called progress report of the child. There are effective and informative ways of reporting. Effective and informating reporting should be valid, neat and fair. It should project children's strength as well as weaknesses. It should be student centered. That is, students should participate in the negotiation of learning tasks and actively monitor and reflect upon their achievements and progress. Reporting should be always about students learning. It should enhance their motivation and commitment to learning. Reporting should be time efficient and manageable. That means only timely reporting will help. Teachers need to plan carefully the timing, frequency and nature of their reporting strategies. Teachers should recognize that individual achievement and progress in the reporting. It reporting should be sensitive to the self-esteem and general well-being of children, providing honest and constructive feedback. Reporting should emphasize values and attitudes. These are distinct from knowledge, understanding and skill outcomes and are import, important part of learning. So it should be reported efficiently. There should be active involvement of parents. Teachers should ensure full participation by parents in continuing development and review of the reporting processes. Reporting should convey meaningful and useful information and feedback so that students' future learning development can be planned. Students' achievement and progress can be reported by comparing students' work against a standard framework of learning outcomes and by comparing their prior and current learning achievements. There are different kinds of report card formats used by schools. In this presentation, I will be discussing three kinds of formats. The first format has, you know, different parameters, which I'll be sharing it with you. And all parameters are marked on three, on three levels. First level is need, that child needs help. Second level is child can do, but with difficulty. And the third and highest level is can do. So now looking at the parameters, the first parameter in this particular report card is understands the function of various organs within the body. Point number two, 
recognize the relationship between personal hygiene and preservation of good health. Parameter 3, recognize the need of human beings to live in a house. Next parameter, identifies different kind of houses according to the climate condition. Other parameter, classifies different food items and nutritional value. This above list of you know EVS topics or these parameters are basically EVS topics and these are not specific to child, these are not child competencies. Also teachers comment about you know can do, we do with difficulty or needs help will not going to tell anything. Teacher comments are general and not specific. For example, you know identifies different kinds of houses according to the climatic condition. What is this going to tell us or tell the parents or even the child about his or her assessment. So now coming to the another sample. The other sample is here in this skills are mentioned. In the earlier format we have seen that you know topics of EVS are given like identify house or identify body parts and in this another sample skills are given. Let us I am just going through this report card. It says observation skills, good or very good, comprehension or understanding skill, good or very good, application to real life situation, general awareness, good or very good, recall retention, good or very good, A ability to analyze, ability to correlate, class discussion, collection skills, project work, group activity, participation, effort, curiosity, presentation, oral, written, pictorial. So all these competencies in this report card are marked on the parameter of good and very good. And then there, there is an overall test grade. So we see that in the report card 1 sample and in the report card 2 sample, both are different in the sense that report card 1 is telling us about the content and report card 2 is telling us about the skill. However, they both are similar in a manner that they both are very general. They hardly tell anything about the child. For example, if a child is given very good in the effort, what does this mean? If a child is given good in collection skill, what does it mean? And then can we overall combine these grades? Can we say that overall child is very good or good in EVS? So this reporting of good and very good does not add any value for the child or even for the teacher. While reporting well, it is important the teacher provides specific remarks. It is also important that child is supported by continuous assessment and hence the remarks for a child over the months are compared with previous assessment remarks as well. This will show a real progress in case of each learner. Now, if these formats are not good, then how sh what kind of format should be used? How should we report assessment? How should we report meaningful assessment or how should reporting become meaningful? These are the questions which needs our answer. For this uh, NCRT document on EVS assessment, assessment source book for primary level for EVS has given a list of indicators of assessment in EVS. These indicators are marked as 1, 2 and 3. 1 is the lower level and 3 is the highest level and teacher were asked, teacher were asked to report assessment on the given indicators. These indicators are observation, discussion, expression, explanation, classification, questioning, experimentation, analysis, concern for justice and cooperation. Yes, the list is long and yes, it is not easy task for this. For assessing children on these indicators of assessment, teachers are requested to you know report their assessment every day. If child has you know shown some kind of observation skill, so they are expected to write it in the child portfolio that yes, this is what ch that particular child has done for the observation skill. This is what the child has done for the questioning skill. This is what the child has done for the experimentation skill. So this is a rigorous process. However, this is meaningful. If, a pa if such kind of report card is given to parents 
or to children, then they can make a comprehensive picture. I will take an example of this report card prepared by one of my students. This name is changed, but here it says Pooja. So for the observation skill, the teacher has written that Pooja observation needs more time to develop. Though she observed many related points, but she needs some hints and cues related to it, like in the task of observation of the earth picture, she was clueless. However, after direction, she recorded a few details. She still needs some support in that process. So, teacher has given her, placed her at level 1. Going to the other indicator of discussion, the teacher has written that she participates less in discussion. In spite of knowing the concept, she does not want to share. Like during an activity of mixing sugar in water, she came to the teacher and shared that putting water in sugar in water and sugar together in a bottle and then shaking it for mixing. It shows that she knows the con concept, but she has lack of confidence in speaking in front of the entire class. She needs exposure for some more activities for opening up in the class interaction. So again, teacher has placed her at level 1. For expression, uh, teacher has given the remark that she is more comfortable in expressing ideas through writing, through writing skill, but she expresses less during discussion. Like when she was discussing about games of boys and girls, she wrote her views in writing very nicely and appropriately, but avoided sharing during the discussion. Teacher has said that she needs to work on her for eliminating her hesitation in speaking by providing exposure to different abilities. Moving to the next indicator, explanation, teacher has written that she needs time to understand, relate and connect new concepts with her prior experiences. Though some support of peers, through some support of peers, she explains by relating it to her experiences as she has done in the task of imagining a journey by a spacecraft to another planet. Go, moving on to the next indicator, classification, it was written that she is able to compare different things and find differences among them. She compared various characteristics of some substances used in the activity on dissolving things in water. She focused on disappearance of things in water. She made groups of objects like iron, pencil, paper, bowl and many other according to the criterion chosen for it. So, teacher has marked her at level 2 in classification. Next indicator is questioning. The, in questioning, the teacher has written that she hardly asked questions in class. Even after a demonstration, she never asked question in a class. The only one question she asked in the entire term was, how does air blow? We need to draw her attention towards anomalies and irregularities so that her question raising skill is developed. Again, teacher has marked her at level 1. For experimentation, teacher has written that she enjoys doing experiments very much. While doing experiments on floating, she put a lot of things and made a long list of things which sink and float. She even made different parts in the list in the worksheet by experimenting at home. And the teacher has put her at level 3, which is the highest level in for her class. For analysis, the teacher has written that she analyzes things by relating her experiences and daily observation. She avoids oral expressions, but she analyzes well. Like during floating task, she analyzed that big cake of soap sinks. So, teacher has marked at the level 2. Next indicator is concern for justice. So, she is empathetic and tries to understand the perspective of others. She helps everyone. I have seen her sharing books, stationary items and material for activities with others in the class. She even tries to explain concepts to her peers. Teacher has put her at level 3. Then cooperation, she is very cooperative. While working in groups, she shared her things, which shows her understanding of other situation. When working in groups, 
she ensures that every group member had an opportunity to see or use pictures or material. If I put all these indicators together and on a bar chart, I can see that at some indicators she is at level 1 and some indicators she is at level 2 and on some indicators she is at level 3. Similarly, by you know such descriptive report cards, I the teacher or any other even the parent, student and any third person can understand but why the particular student is at level 1 in observation, level 1 in discussion or level 2 in some other indicator. So, these detailed descriptive feedback help students and teachers and parents to, uh, to see where the child lies, where the child needs more attention, what kind of activities can be given. And all these feedback is actually part of everyday classroom observation. So, as a habit, if you as teachers can maintain a small diary and can record certain small things in a notebook for every child every day, maybe for five children every day, then after a month you will realize that you have qualitative feedback for every child at the month, at the end of the month. And that qualitative feedback can be then compiled under these indicators. However, the process is lengthy and it needs time and I understand with you know class students of a uh, class size of 50 students it is a tremendous work but I am sure that with continuous effort and if you start doing it and you train your mind in that manner it will only become a easy thing and it will become a habit even if you see that you know, over a cup of tea in staff room, we sit with other teachers and we discuss, you know, what happened in class, how that particular student reacted, what the other students said, why, how some other students reacted to that question. So, that kind of discussion is already going in the staff room and at, at informal level with parents. Through such kind of report cards, we have compiled it and this compiled record can be preserved for, uh, for the next term, another for the next class and one can see a continuous progress in these indicators. And all these indicators are important for EVS learning, you know, uh, question raising, experimentation, analysis, observation, discussion, expressions, all these part of EVS learning. So, if we make a in list of indicators like this, you can add to the list, you can, you know, if you think something else is more important, you can also add it to the list. But the point here is to give a qualitative feedback along with the score. It is important. And these indicators are making more sense. If you go back to the sample of report card 2, there, you know, it was, it was marked good, very good, good, very good. That was not making sense. Secondly, there in that report card 2 sample, you have compiled it and the teacher has compiled it and said that overall grade. But can we compile it? An ability to observe is equivalent to an ability to discuss? No, these are two different skills. These cannot be compiled. These cannot be compiled for an overall score. So, it is important that these skills should be kept differently. And these should, skills should be kept differently, one. Secondly, these skills should be given attention in EVS learning. And third, we have to work on each skill. If we are giving practice tasks or exercises for discussion skill, at the same time, tasks, should be, tasks are required for cooperation skill or concern for justice or experimentation. So, one supplement each other. But focusing on one does not ensure that other is also developed. So, this kind of report card can be used while assessment. So, let us summarize the few points which we have learnt in the assessment. Number one, promptness in reporting is an essential and significant criteria, which means that it has to be reported immediately, promptly. If, if something has happened and you are not reporting it 
it quickly then then there is no then there is no point in reporting second highlight the specific positive observations of assessment assessment is not only about negative things assessment should highlight positive observations positive feedback for the students reporting assessment should foster partnership between parents and teachers to support the students learning and progress next always inform the gaps in learning guidance need to be given to parents regarding their expected participation in child's development on the basis of analyzed learning gap as we all know the teacher and parents both need to work on their on learning of child if they are uh, you know working together then we can reduce the gap in children's learning next it is important that large number of different competencies are added so that a child's varied abilities are reported as we have seen even in in the report card 1 also report card 2 also and report card 3 also there were large number of competencies those number of competencies are trying to cover varied aspect of environmental studies in the report card 1 we have taken the sample report card 1 there was list of parameters from the evs content in the report card 2 and report card 3 the list was from the skills but in all three cases it is varied abilities then next point is that each indicator is should be given a separate grade or a separate score child can be at different ability levels for different indicators which means that if i'm saying that child is at level 1 in observation skill that does not mean that child is at level 1 in any other skill whether it is cooperation or concern for justice so every child is actually at different level in different indicators teachers and parents they need to work so that child uh, learning can be enhanced conveying the teacher concern for child development with respect to evs learning objective need to be conveyed to the parents clearly it should be made clear that why we are doing this kind of assessment why we are doing this kind of reporting because the feedback should be taken positively feedback should be understood in terms of learning for the child in terms for that you know progress should be made for the children feedback should not be considered negative that teacher is trying to find is trying to find fault with my child it is important that feedback should be taken in a positive sense and parents should understand that is feedback is only for their child's growth and learning and development so the meaning and purpose of the uh, assessment should be clearly conveyed to the child informing the parents about the holistic approach on reporting of child's progress in evs is important it is important that we should inform parents about the holistic approach in reporting we should say that we are trying to assess a child from a holistic perspective it is not that we are uh, assessing child on evs content we are assessing child on evs process skills also on evs indicators also which is a holistic approach so assessment should be done in a holistic manner so i understand that from today's presentation you should be able to you know make distinction from a sample of a good report card to a bad report card a good report card should have some kind of score added with some positive feedback some qualitative feedback and the areas which need improvement report card is not only for teachers or is not only for students report card is also for students and their parents parents should know the areas where children need improvement secondly you should uh, as as a teacher you should make sure that report card is understood well by both parents and teachers 
and over a period of time anybody whether a teacher or parent or child can see the progress made by children over a period of time on the listed competencies. One can see that a child is at level 1 in observation in term 1, child moved to level 2 in observation in term 2 and probably moved to level 3 in term 3. So, one can see that continuous progress on indicators. Thank you for this session. Thank you.